Hello and welcome to the walkthrough for my first secure code review challenge, which as you may already know, is an open redirect. So what we got here is a Python Flask app. And for any API, the first thing that I always like to look at is the entry points, meaning the get, post, put, patch, delete routes, which is the way a user or an attacker would interact with the app. So we got our main route on line 12 and a login endpoint on line 25. Now, the next thing that interests me is if there's any sort of parameters or anything that as an attacker, I could control to, for example, inject data into the application. And here on line 18, we can see such a thing. We can see request args get redirect URL, which takes the redirect URL directly from the request, meaning an attacker would be able to control that variable. And the next thing that interests me is a location where a potentially untrusted data could cause harm. And that would be a SQL query being executed, which could be vulnerable to SQL injection, right? It could be data being returned to the client, which may be vulnerable to cross-site scripting, or it could be what we have on line 21, a redirect, which could potentially be vulnerable to an open redirect, right? Which is a phishing vector. Now, as you can see on line 21, a redirect occurs with a variable, right? So something that's dynamic or potentially attacker controlled. So let's trace this variable back. So there is a reference to that variable just here, but that's just a logging statement. So that's not something we would care about right now. Then above that, we have another reference, but this doesn't have an effect on redirect URL. It merely checks if that variable has a value assigned. However, on line 18, just above, we have the already discussed request args get redirect URL, which assigns a potentially untrusted value to the variable redirect underscore URL. And that means we have a full data flow path from a location that is attacker controlled to this redirect statement here. Now, the final thing we want to look at is if this data flow path is actually reached, because if there is some vulnerable code, right, but some other code before that prevents execution or may have some, some other impact on the, on the vulnerability, right, then that could be a problem. So let's look what's going on above line 18. And what we have here is a check if the user is authenticated. And if the user is not authenticated, then they get redirected to the login page. Okay. And as you can see, so this part here, the login page, and this is authenticated user check. It's, it's all mocked here. So we, we don't really care about it because for this very first challenge, I wanted to keep it as compact and short as possible. So does this mean anything for our open redirect vulnerability? Well, in fact, it actually does. It means that we can only fish users that are already logged in, which isn't a massive caveat, but it's just something to keep in mind. And the main reason why I introduced these three lines of code from 14 to 16 it's just to sort of raise a bit of an awareness that not only the code that directly relates to the vulnerability, meaning that part here, but also seemingly unrelated code may have a significance when doing secure code review. Okay, so let's talk quickly about how this could actually be exploited. And that would be creating a link like this. So just the domain, which in our case would be localhost, or just the domain that this API is running on. And then as a redirect URL, we provide evil.com. So basically we would send this to a user. The user must already be logged in because of lines 14 to 16, right? And if they would click on this link, 
They would think that it's innocuous because it goes to the main they trust, right? However, afterwards they would be redirected to evil.com and evil.com may contain a, a form, like a phishing page, so that we could potentially extract credentials, right? We would try to, for example, trick them into re-authenticating and somehow try to gain access to their credentials. That's the most common attack scenario. Okay, so let's talk about remediation. So the first thing I, as an application security consultant, would do is clarify with the developers if they want to redirect to external pages. If so, they should have a strict allow list for external domains. So they probably don't want to redirect to any page in the, in the internet, right? But probably only a handful of pages. And then they could allow list them and specify that redirect URL must be in a set of predefined URLs. And if it's not in this set, then the request is rejected or the user is just logged in to the main page, right? But not no longer redirected to evil.com. However, the more likely use case is that they only want to redirect to an internal page, meaning to another endpoint of that very same API. And in that scenario, I would recommend using a function such as Flask's URL4, which you can see already being used here. And what this means is that redirects to external pages are no longer allowed, but only redirects to other internal pages. For example, we can no longer redirect to evil.com, but we can redirect to slash login, right? And that would effectively mitigate the vulnerability as well. Yeah, and that's pretty much all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed my first walkthrough. And this is actually the first video I've ever created. So if you have any feedback whatsoever, please feel free to let me know. And yeah, that's, that's all I got. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.